You're very welcome to the Ready for Raiding Better Guide for the Firehawk Alice Razor in the new raid instance, the Firelands. My name is Miss Honeyfoot and I will introduce to you the new boss based on our playing on the public test Rearms. The Firehawk is the, the third boss who was tested on this PTR right here, but I think you can engage him any time, no matter which number of bosses there were beforehand, exactly like Ryolith or the Spider Queen Beth Tylak. There seem to be no particular obstacles fencing in this area. After Major Domo Stackhelm showed off his little intro and strolled off, the fight with Alice Razor herself begins. There are four phases, as you can read in the new Dungeon Journal. The first phase is practically the longest and really the main phase, during which Alice Razor does her blazing claw flight three times. She flies over the plateau from northeast to southwest. When this happens, you shouldn't stand in front of Alice Razor because that would harm you. Behind her, though, you can see those pretty orange feathers. The feathers can be picked up to gain some buffs, also called molten feathers. I'm showing it here with the blue wings symbol from Power Auras. As you can see, I just got one stack, which lasts for about five minutes. Every time you pick up a feather, you get a new stack and you become 30% faster. You can pick up a maximum of three feathers. With the third one, you get the ability to fly. We first thought it would be cool to let two people fly from the start to attack Alice Razor from the air, but that doesn't seem to be the kick of this battle at all. As we got to phase 2, we realized it is much better to be very fast during phase 2, which you are if you pick up just one or two feathers. That's why our tactics in the fifth and last try consisted of one player picking up three feathers and indeed sent him up in the air to fight Alice Razor there. In this case we took a melee, which seemed logical to us because the range seemed to make m more sense on the ground as it involves quite a bit of running around and they can attack targets much better. During each flight, Alice Razor loses approximately 10 feathers, so everybody should try to get at least one during the first flight, some might not get any. During the second flight, everybody should manage to get one or even two, though. During the third flight, you might be able to send two players up in the air. The really funny thing about this Molten Feathers buff is that it works similar to the camels in Earth Rager Patas Halls of Origination. Which means once you got a buff, you can cast spells while running, which is very handy. If you have three, like our player right here, you then rise up in the air. As you can see, our Death Knight is flying right behind Alice Razor, through some rings of fire she leaves behind. If you manage to collect those rings, you get an extension of your buff, in this case for 15 seconds, similar to Valithria Dreamwalker. If a player has three feathers, he can stay in the air and fight Alice Razor from there. I am not sure if it is possible to send more than one player up, as it is not easy to get the rings at the same time. Also, the main DPS has to happen on the ground. We luckily got all ads down that were there, so it seems to be working quite well with four DPS on the ground. The explosion in the middle, causing a few fiery tornadoes, is called phase two. Alice's razor is circling high up around the plateau and keeps those things moving, which are quite deadly. You're dead after the third touch. Some of our guys are trying to get around the tornadoes, which are moving on steady tracks, as you can see. So it is possible to avoid them, it might even be necessary in the live version, but here in the PDR version there are two little niches that you can get into and in which you are safe. That was phase 2 already. Here starts phase 3, in which two blazing Talon claw shapers come running, which have to be stunned by our tanks so that they can't keep that blaze up, as they add two more points of energy to the two Alice Razor already regains automatically every second which means that if you can effectively control them, this phase could last 30 or even 35 seconds, or otherwise it ends already after 15 seconds. And you cannot do any harm to Alice Razor anymore, 
that was the relatively short third phase. Here starts the fourth, in which Alice Razor has to be tanked. The tanking has to happen alternatingly, as the tanks get debuffs and should swap every 10 seconds or after 5 or 6 stacks. After that phase 1 begins again and the whole fun starts all over again. On the left and right on the screen you can see the small firebirds which transform into humanoid blazing Talon initiates who show up in pairs of two every 30 seconds and who as usual have to be killed. They always spawn on opposite sides and there is too much space between them so you can't attack them at the same time. You have to run back and forth between them. You can also see the eggs drop of which the tanks should take care. The other players should try to stay away from the eggs and the tanks should be right beside them as these voracious hatchlings will hatch after a little while. For each hatchling you will need one tank who should keep kiting them, ideally over the worms who spit fire, as you can see right now, and who have no health bar. That the health bar is missing seems to be a hint that you cannot attack them. And that is the whole trick. You can only kill the worms by dragging the hatchlings over them so they eat them and you won't get disturbed by the worms again in phase 2. This should all be timed wisely by the tanks as the hatchlings have some additional buffs. The various buffs represent their feeding status and the more hungry the voracious hatchlings are, the more damage they can do. That means if you feed them well with the worms, they won't do much harm and the tanks will also survive it. I'm saying this so easily they will survive it, as we're quite overgeared here with our 372 to 378 gear and therefore also our tanks, and still they are still getting quite battered. So it's not that easy. <laughs> Goal of this phase is to kill all adds until Alice Razor leads into phase 2. There's no problem with the humanoid blazing tail on initiates, you can kill them straight away. The voracious hatchlings have a lot of health so you should keep taunting and attacking them when the blazing Talon initiates aren't there. The tanks can also help there as they have the hatchlings on them with the buff creating quite a damage on the hatchlings. You have to be careful not to kill the last hatchling before all the worms spawned and were fed to the hatchlings as there are four worms per side that can be easily calculated by you. The only thing that can be critically mentioned is the damage to the tank. The encounter itself is fairly easy. It's our fifth and last try as there are still some problems with this instance. Alice Razor doesn't respawn but actually just disappears if you wipe across. That's why we had to reset the instance every time and you only have a limited amount of resets on your hand. After that you get the usual warning you have used up too many instances. That's why this is our last try. But as you can see we will manage to kill Alice Razor but it was our fifth try, you can imagine it is quite easy to kill her here. Here you see the second phase again. As I said, there are four separate tracks on which the tornadoes move, you can run between those. I suspect that will be very necessary in the live version, the two niches seem rather a design flaw to me. We'll see. In phase 3, just starting again, there's usually no group damage, so your healers should also attack Alice Razor and not heal anything. In the fourth phase, which you won't be seeing again here now, there's a lot of group damage. You should gather to keep your healer alive. There's a dot ticking on every player striking for 10,000 damage every second. That phase ends with an explosion causing damage of 60,000, so you should use defensive cooldowns. And a little bit of cuddling. Good night.